imagine you're going through a magazine. You come across an article titled, Neuroscientists Discover That Chocolate Is An Aphrodisiac. There's a nice little picture of a chocolate bar on there, so you continue to read it. But you discover that there's really not much to the article, so you just move on and don't think much of it. However, a few months later, you come across another article. This time, there's one titled, Neuroscientists Discover That Vanilla Is An Aphrodisiac. But this time, there's a picture of a brain. So you continue to read it, and then by the end of the article you're thinking, hmm, there's something to this. I better get me some vanilla. People actually perceive articles that summarize cognitive neuroscience more convincing when they contain images of brains compared to other images of, say, chocolate bars or bar graphs. So why is this? What's going on? People perceive the hard sciences, such as chemistry or biology, as more credible than the softer sciences, such as economics or sociology. These hard sciences tend to use more visuals to explain their data. Therefore, these visuals have become associated with more credible science. A related problem has to do with how the media misinterprets neuroscientific data and creates misleading headlines. Functional Magnetic Residence Imaging (FMRI) is a fairly new and sexy technology. While very interesting and certainly useful in science, it tends to be oversold in terms of what it could tell us about the mind. Combine the general public's lack of understanding of neuroscience, along with the media's general tendency to exaggerate headlines, and add a nice little color graphic of a brain, and you got a recipe for deception. Researchers David McCabe and Alan Castell set out to do a couple of experiments to see if this image of a brain really did have a persuasive effect on the scientific quality of a paper. In experiment number one, the researchers used 156 undergraduate students. They were given three different articles with some neuroscientific findings. Now these articles, some of them had no image whatsoever, some of them had an image of a bar graph, and some of them had the image of the brain. After the students read the article, they were asked a few questions, one being if the scientific reasoning in the article made sense. Now surprisingly, there really was no difference between the article that had no image and the article that had the bar graph. But there was a significant difference between those two articles and the article that contained the image of the brain. The students rated that much more scientifically credible when it simply had the image of the brain. Now, could this possibly be just because any scientific-looking image enhances the credibility of the article itself? Well, the researchers wanted to find that out. In experiment number two, the researchers used 128 undergrad students. In this experiment, the methodology was similar to that of experiment number one. However, this time, the researchers used a topographical map of brain activation instead of the bar graph. Now this topographical map does not look anything like a brain and is not seen as often in the media. When the students were asked to rate the scientific credibility of the different papers, the one with the brain image still came out far ahead of the one of the topographical map with the brain activation. This demonstration had showed that it's not just the visual complexity that relates to credibility, but it's this iconic brain image that we're starting to see a lot more of in the media. The next time you read an article or a scientific paper, think about the methodology used the logic of the paper, the source. Don't focus so much on those cute little images. The only thing that a nice little image of a color brain proves is that color images exist.